morning, America. Steve Ison here. It's uh, Friday, August 17th, here in the beautiful state of South Carolina. And we're about to have our Casey Mafia breakfast meeting of the nonpartisan group that meets every Friday morning at 7 o'clock. And here at the Lizard Stick at Nick next to the airport. So any Friday morning, feel free to come and join us. And uh, we have great discussions. And it's always something interesting, and you never know what will happen. And we have some guests here this morning talking to us about the leadership. And until next week, Steve Ison signing off. Thanks. We're here with, with Eddie McCain this morning at Casey Mafia breakfast. And some of you know from yesterday's Facebook posting that Eddie didn't make the count. He's short for 13 votes. And Eddie is with us. Uh, he came in all positive this morning and uh, was explaining what happened. And uh, Ed, here's Eddie McCain. Eddie, you don't look too discouraged from that. <laughs> no, well, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I, 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 well, first of all, I want to say I really appreciate everybody that supported me and those that, that helped me get signatures. Um, if, if I hadn't I had, if I hadn't I had you helping me, I wouldn't have even come close. And uh, it is disheartening that sometimes you would rather lose by a large margin than by a small margin. Because you know when you lose by a small margin, if I just went out one more day and worked real hard all day, I'd have probably had enough signatures. But um, you know, it is what it is, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep trying to become more knowledgeable and, 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 and more compassionate. And you know, two years from now, you know, if I decide to do it again, hopefully I'll be more prepared than I was this time. Well, I, I think, you know, I can't speak for all the people in the race with you, but I, I know uh, people like Ralph Kennedy and these people would have rather, I think, see you in the race than not. And I, I haven't talked talk to any of these other folks, but I think that's the case. Uh, they want to see the voters decide. The right. voters should decide. You want to say anything about the, about what's the whole debacle? You've been involved in this from the very start. Yeah, well, the, well, the, like you said, it was a debacle. Um, that was a bad deal all the way around. You know, there were over 250 candidates that were removed from the ballot um, that basically followed the guidelines they were given to them by their respective uh, parties. So that was a bad deal from the get-go. Um, when I found out that I was going to be a petition candidate, you know, the first thing I did was went downtown, saw Chris Whitmire at the uh, South Carolina Election Commission office, and he explained to me what I needed to do, how many signatures I needed, and all you know, and all the the variables that go with the petition. And, uh, and I went to work on it. And, uh, and initially, it was really tough because I would approach people and. You know, when all of this happened, you know, when, when you're when you're living in the political arena, sometimes you think everybody knows what's going on. But in reality, only about 10% of the people know what's going on. So when I got knocked off the ballot, I started approaching people in shopping centers and stores and various places. I'd introduce myself to them and say, hey, I'm one of the couple hundred people that got taken off the ballot. You know, and I, I'm now a petition candidate. Would you please sign my petition? And they give me that deer in the headlight look. Like, what are you talking about? You got taken off the ballot? Why'd you get taken off the ballot for? <laughs> you know, and I try to explain it to them. And they would say, well, you can't follow directions. You know, and, and some people would respond with, I had no idea people were taken <laughs> off the ballot. <laughs> you know, so with each individual person, it would take sometimes 15, 20 minutes of explaining to them what happened, you know, why I was removed from the ballot, and no, I'm not illiterate, I can read and follow directions, and, uh, and you're doing that over and over and over and over and over. Now, as time went on, more and more people became aware of, particularly, we you know, with, with uh, Katrina Sheely being a, a very prominent person here, to, you know, with, with her campaign with, against Jakey Knotts, and making, the, making the news, uh, on almost a daily basis for a while, people became far more educated into what was going on. But when this initially happened, you know, the first few weeks, it was, it was really tough getting signatures. I had people, re I had people get mad at me and drive off. You know, I approach them in their car, man, and man, they stomp on the gas and Bleep! pull out. You should have followed directions. Bleep! Pull off, you know. Right, right. Um, but uh, it was a. Uh, Definitely a very historical moment. <laughs> yeah. 
and a very, you know, and a, a very uh, much a learning experience. Is, um, is there anything you want to say to the people viewing this video about, I mean, not just your experience, but what about the people looking to get into office? It seems like this would be discouraging people from entering to, into politics altogether. Yes, it would be, dis it would be discouraging because getting into the political arena is, is, a, is a scary thought to most people because, you know, they auto most people automatically have a negative attitude toward, any, toward politicians, toward people who want to run for office. So when you compound that, <laughs> that, you know, they took 250 people off the ballot who had, who had been campaigning hard, had spent a lot of money, raised a lot of money in, in most cases, and you know, one morning they wake up to a phone call saying, guess what, you're no longer on the ballot. That's, uh, that's gonna be disheartening to a lot of people, and uh, it would affect potential candidates. Because what, you really and, go through a, a lot. And what can be done, in your opinion, just to help prevent this from happening in the future? Any ideas looking back at what you've experienced? I mean, the, the laws. Well, when you've got, when you have corrupt people, and power hungry people, and people who are probably borderline narcissistic, <laughs> you know? <laughs> psychopaths who have no conscience you know they just want what they want and uh you could care less about anybody else you know then uh you're always going to have these type of problems there's always going to be somebody sitting out there you know scheming in their mind what can we do to ensure you know that that we get what we want and uh and that's what we saw in this case. I believe, personally, that's what we saw in this case right here. There were there were some people who were probably terrified at the thought of, of Ron Paul-like people. And I'm not saying everybody that was taken off the ballot, the ballot were supporters of Ron Paul. I know there were, not everybody. But we had, I believe, a record number of people uh, um, applying to be candidates here in the Republican Party here in Lexington County. And I know many of them have a libertarian, like myself, a libertarian philosophy. And I believe that scares to death the, uh, the Republican establishment here in South Carolina and at the State House. And the last thing they want is people who are uh, constitutional minded and want to govern by the Constitution and want to do the right thing. They don't want those. That's not in certain elected officials' best interests to have in the state house. So, in their mind, they're probably doing what they think they have to do in order to keep the establishment the way it is. Well, so there's Eddie. Thanks for uh, coming on the race and what what has happened. And I know there's a lot of people that were really disappointed. And, you know, I, will, I want to say to the viewing populace, this is the nonpartisan group and everyone expresses their opinion. I have to always put that disqualifier. You know, we've had some situations here about on video uh, in the last several months about opinions coming out on video. And these are, each individual has an opinion and this is what this is forums about, is so everybody can express their opinion, including me and everybody here. And this is, group's been around over 25 years and uh, we enjoy it. And, but uh, until until this is Steve Isom, until uh, next week, this is August 17th here Friday. Freedom lives here in Casey and in South Carolina, and we want to make sure it continues to live here. This is the home of freedom. When, uh, so until next week, feel free to join us any Friday morning. Steve Isom signing off. Bye-bye. Yeah, that entertaining interviews with people that uh, you, just tell, you, you did this interview, you got to collect statistics from people. Right. I've had people uh, run me out of their yard. I've had people think that I was this is not this, spy. And this is not campaign stuff. This is related to your job that you're doing. Yeah. Okay, doing interviews with folks. Okay. Why would they run you out of the yard? Well, because they know that it's an interview dealing with alcohol, tobacco, and <laughs> drugs. <laughs> okay. Right? And so, if I say for by chance, you got a meth lab 100 yards back behind your house. 
So you're already going to be paranoid. So somebody like me comes by and, and I'm wanting to do a survey <laughs> on drugs. So, so they they're, they're thinking, I'm like Matt, they're up the bag. You know, they're going they're thinking, oh man, yeah. I'm gonna be logging in all this information on here, and next week, you know, the DEA is gonna be, you know, sending snipers out to my house, SWAT team out here to get me. I mean, yeah. Some people are paranoid. Eddie's not talking about his campaign. He's, he does this little, little part-time <laughs> job collecting information from surveys. So that's what it's about. So we're here this morning and with JJ. Uh, you know, we haven't done any inter any videos hardly much in, in a few weeks. We've had this sabbatical from campaigning. <laughs> but it's, it's Mr. Watermaker, if he ever shows up, it's always good to have him on. He's a, he's a character, Eddie. Really. Two votes. I was, I was short 32 good signatures. I had more than enough signatures. The problem is, signatures. Yeah. You know, they go they go back and they verify each signature. You know, when, when you register to vote in your particular uh, precinct, you signed your name. Mm -hmm. So they looked up each individual signature and they compared it. Right. And if the signatures were not the same, well, then that is not counted. Well, a lot of things could happen. Um, a spouse could have signed for their husband or their wife, you know, and the person doing the survey didn't realize, doing the petition didn't realize it. Or uh, somebody could have had a stroke, and now, you know, elderly person, and now their handwriting's no longer the same. That could happen. But, but you were happy with the, with the state. They went through all this thoroughly with you. And yeah, yeah, I have no, yeah, I have no doubt. No, they, I have no, no, uh, no doubt that they did what they had to do. You know, it, I think it was done honestly. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, um, you know when when you get a signature on a petition, that signature has to be from a registered voter mm -hmm. in your district. Mm -hmm. So I know I had, you know, they, they gave me the breakdown. They showed me all the lists. I don't have it with me, but it showed me how it showed me how many signatures were not registered voters at all. How many were registered outside my district? Um, it showed um, how many they just simply couldn't verify. They couldn't find any information. Oh, it wasn't. There wasn't. They're supposed to sign their name, but they can't. But they can't read their name. Mm -hmm. You know, some people got some people got doctor signatures and mm -hmm. just can't read it. Yeah. And then they they refuse to give their address and their birth date of birth. I got. You. Well then, they don't have anything to go to go to to look up to find that signature that they couldn't read. Because technically, all you need is a signature. And if they can read the signature or read your printed name, they can, they can look it up. So there's it, all kinds of variables there. You can um, they have to be kept separate by county. In my case, it's Lexington County and Saluda County. Which doesn't seem to be that difficult, but when you have two towns like Batesburg and Leesville, they overlap a little bit. Who overlap counties. Mm -hmm. So most people in Lexington County think Batesburg Leesville is Lexington County mm -hmm. because the town is in Lexington County. They don't realize that it overlaps in the Sluda County. So if, if if I have somebody that's helping me get signatures and they've got a Lexington County petition form, and you come up to sign it, and they say, where are you from? They say, we're from Leesville. They're, most people are gonna automatically assume Lexington County. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who live in Leesville who are in Saluda County. I see. So if they sign the wrong petition, it didn't count. Oh, gosh. The reason why it wouldn't count is because the, the Lexington County petitions are sent to be counted at the Lexington County Voter Registration Office, and Saluda County is sent to Saluda County. So if you've got somebody who lives, uh, say, down by the traffic circle in Saluda County, their address is Leesville. So, so let me ask this: Is it possible that you had some valid signatures that they just on the wrong list and didn't get counted? It could have been. Okay. It could. I'm not saying that. I don't know how many. I'm just saying that there's a, there's a possibility of that because when they say they could not verify it, or it, or it was, uh, then that could that could mean that they lived in Saluda County but signed a Lexington County petition. All right. Well, thanks, Eddie.